I truly believed in the military and I was very patriotic and like, mm. because it changed my life and provided me opportunities. When someone says that, like, oh, I have all these benefits now, at the what, at the benefit of what? Like, the demise of another demise country. Of, so you say you support the military. I don't support half the shit the military does. What we do in other countries, I don't support. I mean, I did when I was in the military. But I will tell you, I didn't understand the gravity of that. I didn't sign up to go kill people, even though I technically did join the military. It's the military, babe. Call me naive then, I don't know. I just like... You've been lied to. You come from a country uh, that has a fabricated national identity around a set of values and principles it never, ever applied anywhere. And in fact, more often than not, only ever applied the opposite. No one living in America today has lived under any administration that wasn't guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. And you've been brainwashed into thinking uh, that your country stands for freedom and justice. Being American isn't a citizenship, it's a condition. It's like PTSD. And if you reach adulthood and you're still patriotic, uh, you have the most profound case of Stockholm Syndrome imaginable because that society has deeply, deeply wronged you. If you're familiar with my channel from over a year ago, then you know me from my reviews of Love is Blind. I still watch the show, but my attention has been completely taken over by Palestine. I mean, I'm half Palestinian, half Lebanese, by the way. So now we can actually say that both sides of mine are being pulverized by Israel. So my attention and my heart and my soul and all of me is there. But I still watch the show to take my mind off things. But I just can't bring myself to put content out there that just analyzes what's wrong with people and their behaviors when literal genocide is happening. But I still watch the show to take my mind off things and take my mind off politics. But then to my surprise, when the latest season of Love is Blind, season 7, just dropped, the American military was featured quite heavily in the show. Okay, in 2010, I was in the Marine Corps and we were in Kuwait. We were doing like this training thing in the middle of the desert. And I ended up joining the Navy, which I think I have told you, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, to this day, joining the Navy was the best decision of my life. Did you vote in the last presidential election? Both as a veteran and an American, it's kind of my responsibility yeah. to do so. Thank so, yes. you again for your service. I can uh, navigate a ship, like specifically a USS Naval Destroyer. It's been a few years, but it was a huge part of my life. And all my friends mainly are from military. And then that episode seven dropped where Marissa and Ramses were literally debating the effects of the military, the American military around the world. When I was finally put in a position where I was like, I push the button and a missile gets launched off the ship. I struggled with that and said like, if y'all tell me to push the button, I don't think I can push the button. A lot of kids sign up at the age of like 18 and like, yeah. I don't think we really, really understand like what we're signing up for when we do it. Hmm, okay. It I'm is... feeling judged. And Are you? I'm, I'm sorry. feeling judged. You have a great heart, babe. I don't question that. <laughs> it's okay, baby. It's hard sometimes to like look yourself in the mirror. Say you were sitting in front of me, you were someone who has been like, you were like, my house was bombed. I don't know if I would be brave enough to like sit in front of this person and be like, have but I still support the troops. That's a hard thing because that requires me to like realize like, yeah, while I was on the Navy ship, while I didn't push a button to shoot off a missile, I supported operations that did kill people. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, I have to talk about this. Now, don't get me wrong. I still watch the show for the same reason everybody around the world watches the show about fears of love and fears of intimacy, fears of putting yourself out there and not receiving the love back. I guess we haven't said we love each other yet, have we? I don't know. I'm not sure how I'll react if you don't say it back. This is this vulnerability thing again, right? So... This whole vulnerability thing. I love how Garrett, one of the characters on the show, describes it here. By the way, if you want to see me talk about fears of intimacy and vulnerability and love, I made a theater show that I premiered last month and I'm going to start touring with in December here in Amsterdam. So if you're in Amsterdam, tickets link below. But in terms of creating content here for YouTube, I struggle in putting anything out there that's not related to Palestine. It's not just that I can't bring myself to, I don't want to. It's actually my privilege and pleasure and honor to talk about Palestine. Like, I'm finally coming into my own as a... Palestinian, as an Arab who's been told that there's something wrong with me. And that's the pain, actually, the pain deep inside that I really want to dedicate the rest of my life to talking about and how we become dehumanized in the eyes of the West, not just, by the way, Israel, but also the US. So it was a really pleasant surprise when I saw that On Love is Blind, they were actually discussing, not just putting it out there, it was a long ass scene when they were discussing what the US does around the world through its military. And she's actually somebody who's ashamed of her part in what the US does in the demise of other countries. But she projects that shame and judgment onto him. And acts like, oh, don't judge me, don't shame me, I don't appreciate being judged. But girl, you're not at peace with your part in it. She herself knows 
the level of brainwashing involved that she had to go through in order to be part of the military. Kind of leave the military behind. Nobody, people do not realize the like brainwashing that military does. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we realize actually. The whole world realizes, babe. That's the whole point of what he's saying to you. And you clearly agree with it. But then she keeps reverting back to the old way of thinking by getting defensive. Because nobody wants to be confronted with their part in something that is that evil. Even though she herself is, of course, not evil. But when you realize, fuck, I played a role in that. That is not something easy to contend with. And that's actually what Zionists these days have to go through. The anti-Zionists, the ex-Zionists, the ones who leave that behind. That's a journey to realize, fuck. What was I supporting? Because you feel betrayed, you feel used, you feel stupid, and nobody likes to feel those things. But Ramses wasn't calling her those things. He was saying, I'm happy with all of that as long as it's in the past, and you don't intend to do it again. I wouldn't like want anyone, anyone to feel shame about their past. Yeah. As it's long as it's in your past. That expression on her face, which looks like her stomach just sank in, shows that it's not really fully in her past just yet. It's kind of like when we want to get over something or someone, but we're still not fully ready yet. You're still talking about it, but you're not at peace with it. You get defensive. You're like, no, but it's good for me. Oh no, he still loves me. Oh, but this thing still serves me. And this is what I really appreciated about that discussion is because it really shows the other side, the other side that I don't agree with, but it shows how difficult it is to confront that side of you. But she knows deep down inside that it's wrong. She knows that serving the American military is inherently wrong because of what the military does. And the people themselves, of course, aren't bad human beings. The soldiers themselves and the Marines and all of those. But they're all programmed into believing, they're propagandized into believing that this is okay. It's been my entire life. I grew up on bases yeah. since I was two. And then I did it in high school, I did it in college, and I did it for the last eight years. You know what I've learned, one of the many things I've learned in the last year, is that even though we as Arabs are colonized, like our lands are colonized, our bodies, there's physical colonization, Americans, their minds are colonized. It's like colonized mind versus colonized land. But deep down inside, everybody knows when their mind is being colonized, when they're being manipulated. That's why Marissa was gravitating towards somebody like Ramses. Because we gravitate towards those people who can help us grow. But of course, because growth is difficult, we kick, we push, we resist, we become defiant. Because growth is about confronting you with parts of yourself that you don't like. The parts that actually need the growth. Like the part of her mind that needs to let go of this romantic idea of her experience in the military. That's very painful to let go of. That's why when the discussion was getting heated, she was like, you're not going to shame me. Please don't shame me. Don't shame me. When actually she's the one who's ashamed. Like my service. Mm -hmm. It will... I don't think I can handle like you being ashamed of my service. And I am proud of my service. I support the truth, babe. I just want you to know, I support the truth. I don't regret joining the military. Are you trying to convince me or yourself? But actually beyond reading between the lines about her repressed shame, she literally acknowledges that what the military does is wrong, but she still supports the troops. I will always heavily critique how the US has sort of destabilized entire countries. Like. We need our military at this point. We'd be in a very hurt position. In this and why would, be, why would we be in such a hurt position? Because we put ourselves in this position. We've gone into other countries. We've destroyed countries, societies, communities. I do not ignore that. It's just that I support the, the troops. And the people. The, the people. Are, yeah. Because they were just like me. And what they sign up to do is not easy. And so I support But they sign up for it. Yeah. It's so nuanced. Of course it's nuanced, babe. Everything in life is nuanced. Even the most criminal of activities. If you look at rape, for example, if you're going to dig into the past of every person who committed rape or some kind of act of violence, you're going to find out probably that they were abused as a child. Yes, of course it's nuanced, and there's a time to discuss that nuance. But when you see the crime, when you see the rape, if you walk by a person who's actually raping a girl, you're not going to be like, hmm, but it's nuanced. Maybe he was also abused. No, you're going to stop the rape. You're going to stop the crime. Then we'll discuss the nuance. But that's how removed everyday Americans are from the consequences of the imperialism of their country. Even when they know what those consequences are, they still don't want to let go of it. Kind of like how you know smoking is bad for you, but you still can't bring yourself to quit. Only in this case, the thing that you're doing, the military, is not only hurting you, it's hurting other people. So stop it, babe. But of course, when there's a painful truth, we always want to shield ourselves from it. And in the case of the military, they shield themselves behind this romantic story of what the military does. And what's very interesting, also in Marissa's storyline on Love is Blind, the other guy that she was choosing between him and Ramses was called Bodin. He's actually originally Ukrainian. And she was still between him and Ramses in the pods. Marissa! Bodin! <laughs> yes! Oh, I love it. I love it. I was born in Ukraine. I came to the States very young when I was about two years old. 
when the war in Ukraine started, if you remember, I said I was born there. I like knew I was like, I, I have to go. My work ended up raising a bunch of money for me and like paid for all my gear and stuff. My parents, I thought it was going to be like the toughest phone call I made. They said, we knew you were going to do this. And I, I, I was like very honored to, uh, that they would think so high. All right, give me a second. Uh, okay, now take your time. I'm going to put aside the obvious hypocrisy and double standards. Like his employers gave him money to go in the war. And his parents were so moved, so proud. Okay, so why not for the Palestinians? Why are they terrorists when they resist? I don't get it. The Ukraine is a proxy war for America. They want to take down Russia. It's not about caring about Ukrainians. But we're going to put that aside for now. Let's park it a little bit and talk about just how the military is romanticized, how it's come to symbolize freedom for Americans. And in a way, someone like Bowdoin, as opposed to Ramses, would have been a perfect fit for Marissa because he too, like he would have never shamed her for the military. But deep down inside, actually, she knows. That's why she chose the right person in the end. Because even though if she went with Bowdoin, he would have like also glorified the military experience. But deep down inside, she knows this discussion needs to be had. She needs to be confronted with this. There's a reason why she put the military behind her. And that's why I'm so happy this discussion was actually aired on Netflix and such a lengthy discussion again. And all this stuff is getting exposed these days. Big thanks to Gaza. And speaking of Gaza, Palestine was brought up on the show by Ramses. We talk about things like Palestine right now, but I always stand with like people who are on the like on, under the hammer of like U.S. imperialism. It's so interesting if you watch their expressions when he talks about you know the hammer of American imperialism and how it comes down hard on people. Their expressions were like, it's so interesting. None of these girls are white, <laughs> so deep down inside they know what this country is built upon. They know. But of course, they don't want to know. Like one of her friends, when he was talking about, you know, American imperialism, she's like, you're not going to shame me. Again, she did what Marissa did. It's like, the experiences, I'm so proud of it, and I'm not going to let you not be, make me feel proud of it. I mean, I was in as well, yeah. and it's like something to be proud of. Yeah. That was a huge part of our life. And I, I have a, I mean, I'm so, I love the military. Like, no one is saying you shouldn't be proud of it. And I'm sure the experiences and the relationships you built in the military, you've probably met the nicest people. And by the way, again, I want to say this. Like, Americans are some of the nicest people. So none of this is against American people. Like, actually, I have an aunt. She lives in Montana, my mother's sister. And we visited them in the 90s. And you know, Montana is like a very Republican state. And when we went there, like, with my mom, who's Lebanese, and her two Lebanese-Palestinian children, like, everybody was so nice to us. So nice. Because if Americans meet Arabs, meet the people who are on the other side of this military campaign, they would never commit these crimes. But for them, we are so removed, just like how Palestinians are so removed for Israelis. It's this other thing. It's so dehumanized. Like dehumanized is not even big enough of a word of what's happening. Like we don't even exist. Like they genuinely believe in their mind that they love freedom and we are like apes who just wake up like, who's free? <gasps> Let's go kill them. No, Habibi, we also want to be free. We also want to dance and music festivals and sing. And, like, this is not why we exist. We don't exist to ruin your freedom. We just want you to stop taking away our freedoms. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like, this denial is so interesting. Like, there was another friend at that same gathering, friend of Marissa's, who told Ramses, like, after he was talking about all the stuff, the imperialism and what the costs of it. She was looking at him and she was like, are you really going to break up over this? Like, if she rejoins the army, would you break up? If she were to go back into the military would that cause a, pr a problem i'm definitely not going back in but what if uh, i did that is like a like a that would automatically be divorce it's, it's yeah it's a moral thing for me even though you you love her and everything i love her just yeah. because of that and everything i don't view politics and those type of things as like something that exists in a vacuum like they affect real people and I, I feel like it's a very, like, it's a morality thing. This is not like a difference in uh, musical taste. No, these are real people who are dying, babes, <laughs> honey. And what's so interesting about that, again, I'm sure this person is lovely. Like, this is not a personal against her. But like, this really proves how Americans view the military, that it's there to fight for their freedom. But honey, it is there to help your government occupy lands and help weapons manufacturers sell more weapons. Like this fantasy that these wars are saving you. Like Iraq, an entire civilization, not just a country. You've erased it. You've wiped it out. Millions of lives are lost. 
under fake pretenses like Iraqis had nothing to do with 9-11, absolutely nothing, and there were no weapons of mass destruction, you pulverized the country, people's hopes, dreams, you spread them around the world, you gave birth to ISIS, which you helped. For what? What freedom? You know what Iraq was for Americans, and not just for Republicans, for Democrats, the Democrat Party, Hillary Clinton, that demon in human form, in grandma form. It's time for the United States to start thinking of Iraq uh, as a business opportunity. Business opportunity. Business opportunity. I know this way of thinking doesn't represent everyday Americans like Marissa and her friends, just like it doesn't represent the everyday thinking of every Israeli in Israel. They probably think that this uh, ethno state where Jews are supreme, for them that feels like they're being saved and it's their homeland and they're running away from persecution. But babes, those freedom that you have are built on the backs of other people suffering. Time to rethink what actually freedom is. If someone gets uh, annihilated for you to feel free, no babes. Mm -mm. Back to the drawing board. And you know when people are confronted with these ideas, like Marissa's friend, you have nothing to argue against that. Because you know, if you see what America does, what the cost of this freedom is, you know it's the truth. So then one of her friends, when he kept talking, when Ramses kept talking, she was like, so where are you from? Like you must be a foreigner to think this way. Where are you I mean, from? It's a I'm from Venezuela. Venezuela, okay. Yeah, and Venezuela has a very complicated history with the US. And maybe that's true, by the way. You do need to be an outsider to see America for what it is. Because you go outside the bubble, and then you really see. There was also a funny scene when they were still in the honeymoon phase, when they were on the boat, and Marissa was talking about her experience in the military, two rounds. There's like a lot of sweet moments in the Navy, mm. and like being out to sea, and like being with your crew. And occupying land, and killing everyone on it, and then pretending they're terrorists for resisting us killing them. <laughs> the good old days. I miss it. Again, this is not against Marissa. <laughs> Sounds like it, but I mean, I'm sure she's lovely. But like, this is about the brainwashing that the system does. And it's so interesting how people also... Another way of shielding themselves from the truth, when you become open-minded and very empathetic about other things. It's like selective open-mindedness. Like someone like Marissa, when they were discussing who's going to be the officiant at their wedding, they both agree they don't want this to be a religious wedding, right? And then they're discussing what kind of officiant. And she says, anyone but a man. Anything but a cis-hetero. <laughs> she needs to be a female. No. No cis-heteros. Yeah, I will actually take... I'll take anything, yeah, anything that's fine. else anything but else. a cis-hetero. <laughs> like, gender is where you draw the line? Not the murder of people around the world. It's like, mm, I know I may have given an order to shoot out a missile that killed an entire family, but gender is where I draw the line. <laughs> Not cis hetero, please. <laughs> hetero. By the way, honey, <laughs> you're cis hetero. You're a woman who likes men, so you're cis hetero. And Ramses is a man who likes women, so you're both cis hetero. This is not the problem with the world, says Hadera. These empty liberal values that Democrats have, that they think they're like wonderful people when they're okay with genocide, but <laughs> they have the right pronoun, so everything's great. No, babe. Mm -mm. You know, earlier this year, there was the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, and literally the people coming out of the convention, there were protesters outside saying the names of the Palestinian people who died, and these people coming out of the DNC were covering their ears. This is typical Democrat liberal behavior. Like, I don't want to know what's going on around the world. <laughs> la 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 la. Use the oh, God, no. Use the oh. Turn around and join the delegates. Just reciting what's fashionable nowadays in identity politics, but not actually having real empathy. And this is really embodied in Kamala Harris. This empty shell, this empty suit, who's nothing but a front for the military industrial complex. She says exactly what she's told in these kind of like, her speeches are all like this word salad of like identity politics that mean nothing. She's just rambling. Like it's, 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 it's really stunning how stupid this woman is. Like when she is asked, like in all of her pre-taped, very softball interviews, and one of them she was asked about like what she would do about the economy, like how she would bring down prices and make things affordable for people, la la la. She goes like this, let me start by saying this. I'm a middle class woman with a middle class upbringing. And my mother, who's brown, brought me up and my sister. And we're all women. And we're brown. And what? What does that have to do with anything? What are your policies? Say something of substance, honey. I'm speaking! You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking. Really? Because you're saying nothing. I'm speaking! You could have fooled me, bitch.
And that big speech of hers at the convention when she was like, I promised the most lethal military. This is what America needs? More lethal? Can it get more lethal than this? People are dying in a hurricane in your country. Go save those people. Lethal military. What a joke. But let's go back to Love is Blind and Marissa and her delusion about, you know, her experiences with the military. Not only is she rejecting the military, with the military, she's also rejecting macho military men. She keeps talking about that. And that's why she likes somebody like Ramses. He's like more of a gentle guy and all that's great. But she keeps talking about how she's over those kind of men. But I don't think she's over it. There's a thou doth protest too much going on with a gnosis hetero and she talks about like it's very important that they watch the movie barbie because the movie barbie taught her about how bad the patriarchy is there's such a great message behind barbie barbie like made me realize i'm not accepting any man who's for the patriarchy it took barbie to make you make you realize <laughs> yeah i don't think she's ready to let go of the patriarchy or the military because they go hand in hand like mm -mm. she hopefully maybe will be one day and she wants to be clearly but she's not ready Speaking of the kind of men she used to like in the past, there was a very funny scene where before she introduces Ramses to her mother and she's talking about why her mom is so protective of her and she hated all the men that she dated. She's like, my mom hated all the guys that I've been with because they were trash. Yeah. My mom didn't like love all my exes, but that was mainly because they were like trash. But you are very different from who I've ever dated before. So. Right. And I really understand where Marissa's coming from about running away from ghosts in the past and wanting to do things differently. Those fears really resonated with me. And she's not the only one on the show with fears from the past. Like there was, it really struck me on this season. And maybe it's always been there, but it really stood out this season because it kind of mirrors what I'm going through personally. Wanting to do things differently. Making a conscious decision to give as much attention to my personal life as much as I've been giving to my work. When I was younger, I wanted to like just ch achieve so much. And I thought that was like the, the end goal for me, like the meaning of life. Uh, and that's part of the reason why like I haven't been in a relationship in quite a while. Yeah, I really like this Garrett because I like to think that when I'm going to meet somebody, which I hopefully will, this is why, this is what my show is about really, actually. One of my friends described like my theater shows, what they're like. They're actually like a theatrical form of me manifesting something into my life. Like the show I did last year, all about me and my mother, where I played my mom. I really wanted to write a show where I would overcome the uncomfortable feeling that I had towards my mother. And it really did. I adore my mom now. But I had to go through a whole year of touring with the show, doing it and really letting it sink in. So I'm hoping this new show brings about this understanding. But in my fantasy, I like to think that I'm going to invite someone into my life the way Garrett invited Taylor into his life. Like after he also had like a seven year gap because I've been single also for like seven years. And he's very measured and he doesn't overdo it. And I like to think this is how I'll be like. Whether reality will match up with what I want, we'll see. I feel extremely like vulnerable right now because like I'm leaning in so hard to you and it's scary to do that. You are amazing and you are you are. if you change your mind or you feel differently, I'll end up looking like a complete fool and I'll be crushed. It's worth it because if I don't fully lean in, like I could lose you. Yeah, you better work, Garrett. This is how I hope to handle it. When a fear comes up, when I meet my future person, that okay, the fear's here. Let's not let it take over completely. Almost like you just gotta, the thing is with love, like you can theorize about it, right? But there's a certain element of it that's like really taking the leap. <laughs> and while we're in this like kind of more forgiving, graceful spirit as the video winds down, I really want to give a shout out again to Marissa because I talked a lot of shit about her, even though it's nothing against her. I think she's very cute and I hope she gets everything she wants in her life. But yeah, I was really talk using her as an example to talk about, you know, American imperialism. But actually she had a very sweet moment in that same discussion before they got into the military discussion. They were talking about religion and she talked about even though she doesn't want a religious wedding, she actually was Mormon before and she grew up and she was raised like she went to the temple and all of that. And she talked about her past in a very interesting way. Like she doesn't hate her religious past, even though she moved away from religion. I don't hate religion. Like, I guess it sounds like I hate religion. I don't hate religion. I always tell people, like, some of the best people I've met throughout life have been, and, and some of the nicest, mm -hmm. have been, like, Mormon people. And this is exactly how I feel about my Muslim upbringing. Because some of the nicest, most giving, most generous people I've ever met, and even the most compassionate about me being gay, are people who are practicing Muslims in my past. And now I'm waking up to that, again, thanks to Gaza, because I'm realizing not every Muslim is like... And it's so embarrassing to even admit that I believed that once upon a time. That me and my culture, that there's something wrong with us because American government decided to tell us that there's something wrong with us as they paved the way for taking our lands. Fuck off. <laughs> Speaking of how Muslims are portrayed in the West, Netflix just dropped 
Love is Blind Habibi, the Arabic version, which was filmed in Dubai. I watched it. Let me know if you want me to analyze it, review it, because it really, I don't know, there's something about this, about this version that speaks to my kind of Arabic upbringing. Because it's filmed in Dubai, where I grew up, and it's kind of more westernized Arab. So there's something I could relate to it a lot. So if you want to see me talk about that, let me know. But first, by the way, I'm going to drop in a couple of weeks on Halloween that episode about Zionism. You know, Halloween, because <laughs> Israel is the boogeyman. And of course, no in denial experience, whether show, video, documentary, is complete without a little nod to delusion. Now, as I always say, I'm in denial, so you can wake up. So, celebrity crush. Henry Cavill, I feel like that would Oof. be mine. Woo. I kind of look like him. You think I'm delusional? They're never interested in me, just like a pretty thing to look at. I'm not the only one delusional.